One area that I find often gets overlooked is the idea of a modern data workflow and what that looks like for data teams in their day to day. Things like environments, automated checks, how the different naming conventions work. So in this video, I'm going to break down what a typical workflow looks like so you can decide if this is something you need to introduce to your team completely or maybe there's one or two areas that you can tweak to improve your existing process. All right, so to explain this concept at a high level, I'm gonna use a combination of visuals here and then an example project. So let's say you have a data architecture here. It's a batch loading, you're moving data along, and in between you have some transformation. For some teams, this might look like making changes directly to a database. Maybe there's some stored procedures, and changes as soon as you save them, it goes right to production and it's live. And there's not a whole lot of testing, at least automated testing in between outside of what maybe that developer did on his own. Now with the modern data approaches, again, more than just the tools, rather than saving straight to a database, you have your logic in code in a project. So let's just say, for example, you can go through here and see exactly what the code is. And anytime somebody makes a change or wants to push through a change, it's not a direct save. You have to come through here and create what's called a branch, check out your own development version of this code and test it. And therefore you can see all changes line by line and you can implement some automated testing for whatever gets to production. So it's a completely different way of thinking about your workflow. And it's really important to catch errors, to ensure long-term stability of your project and all this other stuff. So now that you understand the reasoning for having something like this in place, let's go now more into these visuals to explain these concepts. All right, so here we are again, imagine we have this process and let's just say for the sake of example, we have all of this happening on Snowflake and our data transformation again is DBT backed up by GitHub. It's kind of the example we showed before. How can we test these changes along the way? So here's another view of this overall cycle and to try to drive home the point, of what we're talking about here. So let's say, again, we have our sources, raw data. We remove some of this in between. Don't worry too much about that. But just imagine we have our production version of everything. So that includes staging, warehouse, marts. Just for simplicity here, it's all in one database. So all of the code backing up the logic here is stored in that GitHub repository. Imagine this dark blue folder represents the main live version of the code. Now, if you're a developer, and you want to make changes, you're going to create your own little side development version of this and have your own code base that you're working on and making changes. Now, if you do this correctly, you can also set up a separate database schema for you to test those changes in that's outside of production. And again, the goal there is to make sure that you're able to do this in a safe space and you're not touching this, but you're still using the right code. You don't have to be testing against the production schema here. You can just do it all on your own separately, but there's nothing really stopping you from still selecting from the production raw data, but it's those transform results that you can store separately so you're not overriding anything in production being touched here. So imagine you have four developers, each of them are developing separately, they have their own schemas. At some point you want to get that into this main version here. So what you can do is open what's called a pull request or it might be called a merge request through your version control platform where you'll have a separate schema or database called QA or maybe it's UAT, whatever you want to call that. And that will use whatever changes you're trying to move forward and test them separately. And you can do this on an automated fashion. So a developer gets the code, they make their changes, they push it through and have it automated, tested, peer reviewed, all this stuff here separate again before it ever gets to production. And then once you decide it's good to go, it can be automated again to be merged to this main code and deployed to production. All that process behind the scenes is happening to keep your production data safe, quality checked, and avoid you know accidental saves to a production database. So just to drive this home, here's another look at this. Again, imagine we have this pipeline and and we have these different tools that we're using. Let's say it's Snowflake, DBT version controlled on GitHub, and you would have your development QA underneath, you know, kind of living below the surface of these main ones, but still using the raw data because it's just a select. You're not inserting or deleting anything here. You're just selecting and creating your new results through your tool like DBT. So hopefully conceptually this makes sense. And then again, if you tie it back to a tool like GitHub, you would see on here, you would be having separate branches of this. You, I, you can see I have three branches. You would submit pull requests and have all this automation in place to test and validate your code and make sure your team is following good practices. You're not accidentally inserting bad code and really just keep a good maintenance on your project. Hey, so real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you want some more information on modern data tools, modern data engineering, or just the data stack in general, I put together a free starter guide that will help give you some more clarity on a lot of these concepts and walk you through some of the most important topics in this space. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link below or you can just go to startwithmoderndata.com. So now the last part of this video, I want to show you what this could look like in Snowflake to help, again, drive home the point and hopefully clear up what this could look like for you. Okay, so I've opened up a sample Snowflake environment here. And let's imagine, again, we have that raw data that would represent this right here. In analytics, we have staging we have warehouse 
and we have marts, which again could just be analytics here, whatever you want to call that. And we can consider these the production schemas. Now behind the scenes, we might have a developer, let's say it's me, or somebody named John Doe, whatever you want to call that. We have our separate schemas here where we're pulling from this same source, but we're just deploying everything separately here. And it might feel like it's a little redundant to be storing this separately, but the general idea here is because the cost of storage isn't as big of a cost as it was maybe in the past, this is usually not as big of a deal. And again, you can limit the scope in other ways if you don't want to look at the whole data set, maybe you just want to use a specific subset. But the idea here is having a little extra trade-off of storing more data in your dev data sets and the CI data sets so that you can ensure quality is worth it to avoid just you know trying to go right to production and accidentally introducing errors or issues that your stakeholders are going to find so again now we have our dev schemas imagine you're changing your code and deploying just to here now we go to github and we say we want to merge our code in here then we decide to open a pull request in here and it'll get automatically checked and deployed to a separate qa uat or maybe you call it ci the naming's not as important it's just the concept here a separate schema that's taking your changes from your branch deploying it, testing them and making sure everything's good to go. And at that point, and only then you can then merge it to production where it will then get deployed to the production code and all that stuff gets updated and every day going forward. Now these three warehouse staging marts and your whatever production environment is all based on the updated code that you've pushed through and you've tested and you're good to go. All right, so hopefully now you understand what a typical data workflow looks like in the modern stack and what you can do to implement it on your own team. Let me know in the comments if this is something you're already doing or if you have questions on this process. Otherwise, thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.